Uh, uh, oh, we're going. We're going. What is going on, everybody? It is Tree from Dream Talks here for episode number six of the Yee Yee Lifestyle. And yesterday I had a subscriber on the channel, and uh, he, was, he was relatively new to the channel, probably since like about March or so. But I have a couple of guys that have been loyal and ridden with me for a really long time. And it's about time I made one of these with my guy. You've probably seen him in the comments section. We're talking to Patrick Jackson today. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How's it going? You know, I'd say I'm hanging in there. Just got off work, so it can never be too bad. So you're out there in the UK. Now, we were talking a little bit before the podcast. And we're talking about how I, I asked because, you know, it's, it would probably be a right to assume that, you know, because the Jags go to Wembley every year, that that's why you're a fan. But you've actually been rocking with these guys basically since the beginning, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I started watching in 95. Uh, um, back then, the coverage was like an hour on a Sunday morning of the games from the week before. Um, but, yeah, the, I, I started watching when they first formed and um, you know my surname's Jackson they're Jackson Phil it's in Destined and us um, British guys we love an underdog so you know first time in the league underdog is it's right there for us. So uh, for somebody that wasn't alive during the 1995 <laughs> you know the int- introductory to the team you know what was you know, and as a guy that wasn't even from Jacksonville, but a guy that's been there since the beginning, you know, what what was that like to see a team kind of build up and see them go so far and so many lows? Yeah, we don't we don't have anything like that system in the local sports. So it's something really to get your head around. There's you know, there's no promotion, no relegation. You're just all in one league, building together for the playoffs and everything, um, and that you can just kind of form a new team and drop it in there is a kind of foreign concept. Um, but it's been great to watch them grow over the years. And, you know, we've had a long, fairly fallow period apart from the um, playoff run a year or so ago. So, you know, it's, it'd be nice to be able to get back to some more of that. And I think we've seen positive signs for the direction things are going in. So, and again, because it, it's cool because, you know, I like having you on here because we're really, you know, we know each other because we're both Jags fans, but we're both cut from different cloths. We're obviously from different places. I'm from Idaho, which is a northern – it's a northern state, but it is about as redneck as you can get down here or up here, I guess is what you can say. And, you know, we, we're not used to, like, the U.K. sports, you know, that kind of scene. You know, what, what is that like in soccer and how seriously do you take that and who's some of your favorite teams? So I grew up in a town called Sheffield, which is, I guess, the sort of England version of Pittsburgh. Um, I grew up a Sheffield Wednesday fan. I moved down to Stevenage for my job about 15 years ago and got a season ticket at Stevenage. They are in the fourth division of English football. So that's like clubs um, 96 up to 70 two in the rankings if I can count to 24 at quarter past one in the morning um so they're a, they're a small team kind of punching above their weight against some teams with much bigger budget so again it fits that sort of underdog mold of the teams I've always followed yeah man for sure so um uh, we know you're into the Jaguars we know now that you're into soccer what other what other things are you into you know what are some hobbies of yours you know things like that yeah, sure. So most of my spare time spent like wandering around nature, looking at wildlife and stuff. Uh, I sing in a band, um, like kind of rock indie covers sort of stuff around pubs now and again. Um, play a lot of sports to a very mediocre level, badminton, volleyball. I just got in from cricket tonight, just got in, it was like six hours ago. Play cricket tonight, I've got bruised hands from that, yeah. So is this like a, this like kind of like a community thing? You just got some buddies, you guys get together and play cricket, or what's that situation like? Yeah, guys from work, guys from work. So they were a couple of plays short. They called me in because I can run about and field on the boundary a lot. You know, you know this is so – oh, that's so freaking funny because it's – you guys are playing pickup cricket, which is something in America we would <laughs> – I don't even know what cricket is, to be 100% honest with you. And, like, me and my friends, we always, you know, gather together and play backyard football. Does does your stuff get in pretty intense or is it pretty lighthearted for most, most of it? There's a couple of, because it's like four works teams, so it gets a little bit of rivalry between those groups now and again, but yeah, tonight was really friendly. 
partly because they thrashed us. So, you know, when you're that far apart, you don't get that much needle. And I guess, too, because you, you guys are work friends, so you guys see each other the next day. I think the difference with me and my friends is that we have all been friends for so long, and I can't even tell you, like, we will sit there and argue about penalties and touch football for years. Like, like, like <laughs> there's this one play we had. So it's basically, it's chopped up into two different crews, and we've all been interleague friends forever. So we had these crew games, right? And we would always lose to this other crew. Because the so the quarterback gap, I'm I'm out here just explaining my whole backyard football league here. <laughs> the big the big gap is that the quarterback play is so subpar. So we have a kid that plays quarterback for their crew. His name's Drevin, which is funny because my name's Trevin, and he is up here best quarterback. And then I'm the second best, and I'm like right here, and everybody else is just below. So we would always lose crew games, but this one time we won, and. <laughs> I snapped the ball, and we had this argument for the game point. Throw a touchdown, game point, and then freaking they say that we were offsides. And I'm like, this is what? What do you mean we're offsides? We're <laughs> arguing forever. And then my friend Bryce, who's been on the channel a couple times, is like, I'll, I'll run that. I'll run that back. So we, we ran it back, and my boy, he's unathletic, just this white dude catches it, hits the slowest spin move of all time, whiffs, and we end up winning. And it was like the best day of my life. <laughs> Good times. Yeah. Do you, so any, uh, any other sport you play like that that gets like kind of that competitive or are you more just low-key? I've played a lot of soccer. That's the, the sport I played the most. Uh, I retired last year. I did some knee ligament damage. So that's, that's why I'm doing kind of lighter stuff like volleyball and badminton now, just easing myself back in. I don't see myself going back to football now. I'm like, I'm 36, so it's getting to the point where it's like surgery to reconstruct it or just take it easy and live the rest of your life, you know? I really just realized I pretty much disrespected you when I called uh, soccer (laughs) soccer, didn't I? (laughs) You heard me wince when I said it, yeah. Association football. (laughs) I know, when you you said said football, I can't even say, I'm not even going to try and say it like that because that was bad. Like when you said football, I was like, "Oh God!" Totally disrespected a whole country right there. <laughs> That's cool. We've got a big enough, um, what's the word, community of NFL fans now that uh, I think you can get away with football over here a lot more than you could. It's it's <laughs> the one thing the way the coverage has changed. You know, is that before when it was a, you were an NFL fan back in '95, it was me in my room watching it and didn't really have anyone to talk to about it now you've got you know the whole internet so you know you link up with american fans you link up with european fans i talked to like three people about it when i was in berlin last week you know it's just you wearing your hat people spot it and you talk about stuff it's 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 really good the way the community over here has expanded so you have more people to discuss the game with so you've have you been to all the jags games in wembley so far only baltimore so far Oh, um, I went to two of the games last season, but I had a gig on the day of the Jags game, so I missed the Jags game. Ludicrous. Ludicrous. <laughs> so, um, as a guy that grew up as a Jag- Jags fan, you know, from 95, how – explain your feeling when you heard that the Jacksonville Jaguars, a small market team that you'd like to root for, is heading to your country to play one game a year. Were you excited? What was that like? I guess the feelings are kind of mixed because you get, what, 16 regular season games? So we're taking a big proportion of that. Um, Like our league's 24 teams play each other twice, so we've got 23 home games a year. So, Um, And I would it would be painful to lose one of those to another country, although you can see, like, you know, it benefits the club as a whole, but it doesn't benefit you as a fan necessarily. So... You know, I'm, I'm glad on a personal, selfish level, but it's a mixed yeah. blessing for the uh, Jacksonville fans, I'm sure. That's that's how you be, dude. You got to look out for the best interest of the team. I like what you're thinking with that. <laughs> you're a team guy. Yeah, that's the sort of players you need to be doing in a small market, right? Exactly. So you said you played a little bit of soccer back in your day. Like, where? what's the furthest you went? Did you go to college and play? Did you play at any pro level, you know, anything like that? No, nowhere near that level. Um, we played a lot of five-a-side at work. Um, I played for... Uh, so my university, I was at York, was split into like seven colleges. So I played 
within the colleges against the other colleges, but never at the university level. Nice, nice. So I guess kind of, let me think, overall England question. So it's 1 a.m. right now where you're at. Yeah, yeah, 20 past one. I learned tonight that Idaho has two time zones. I had no idea about that. I know. So what did you, did you just Google it? Were you like, what, what time is it in Idaho? Yeah, I had a quick look at the time and the first time that came up was an hour earlier than you are, I guess. Um, oh, yeah, that because, gave me a lot of time to set up, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, because southern, because I live in northern Idaho, so southern Idaho is an hour and a half ahead of northern Idaho, which doesn't make any sense in the slightest. Yeah, the west side time zone, so north side time zone, so crazy. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking up a map. It's all good, man. So, um, let's see. I'm to think of some questions here for you, bud. Okay, you know what? I'm going to be selfish again because that's just how I got to be. How did you find out about Dream Talks? Because I asked, I asked that kid that last night. Uh, I found out about you, I think, through uh, another Jags pod and um, either Twitter in a conversation with them or in their comment sections. And then I've seen you since cropping up in the um, live chat of their, their shows, which is really good seeing that kind of interaction going on. Dude, it's going to be dope because Jason's going to be a weekly staple on the, on the channel here in a couple of weeks. Great stuff. He's coming back, is he? I enjoyed the show before. Dude, yeah, he's coming back, and we're but we're doing something different. We're gonna so basically, it's gonna be a video series, and it's gonna be one video. This is live, but see, this is the benefits you get when you listen to the Yee Yee lifestyle. I see the view counts, y'all, y'all skyrocket on everything else, but you drop here. But if you listen here, you get exclusive content that you won't know about until later. So, Treb and Jason, we're gonna be linking up, and we're gonna be dropping one video a week for 30 weeks and we're going to determine who my new favorite NBA team's going to be. He has, he's filled with NBA knowledge, I guess. So he's going to be feeding that to me. We're going to have a little podcast kind of like what we're having here. And you know, I'm, I'm hyped for that. Are you an NBA guy at all? Oh, I never got into basketball. It's like the fourth of my American sports. So what do you, what do you rank your American sports? Uh, NFL then hockey slightly behind, then baseball quite a bit behind, and then basketball low. I think, I think the thing with basketball is I've always been really short, and we had to play it in school, and I just never touched the ball, and it just made me angry. So like, <laughs> I found it really hard to get into watching anything, because I just think back to not ever touching the ball for an hour and getting furious. <laughs> the competitor side in you, dude, I feel that. Freaking, uh, oh, yeah. so you like hockey. Love hockey. It's I'm so the- fast and so like intense see i don't fuck with hockey dude i i like i tried man i tried i like literally i went uh when i in when i proposed to bailey like at the uh restaurant or whatever we went to a hockey game after that and like that was like kind of my chance i was like i'm gonna get into hockey i'm gonna see how it is i watched it and i was just like eh, you know i don't know what what does what what does hockey do for you why do you like it I like the speed. I like the intensity. Um, there was a like a Premier League side in my in Sheffield, Sheffield Steelers. So I went to watch those quite a lot growing up as well. So having that local connection to it at a decent level really helps. So okay, I as a person that doesn't know anything about soccer, what so what's the squad that you were diehard about again? Uh, Stevenage is the local side I go and watch a lot. So, are what league are they considered in? Their league, uh, League Two. So, there's the Premier League, which will have the teams you've heard of in. Championship below that, another 24 teams. Uh, league One below that, another 24. And then League Two, another 24. And then below that, it starts getting kind of amateur. So, when you, when you go into that, do you just play the teams in the Division Two? Yeah, yeah. You play the other 23 teams in the Division twice each, too form the league season so it starts august ends in sort of may time so we get a good long season compared to the nfl so i'm probably sounding so ignorant but i'm trying i'm trying to get used to this whole soccer thing because I, I think soccer is interesting like i like watching the world cup i know you're just telling me uh you're watching that how'd that game turn out yeah england got through they beat norway 3-0 fairly comfortable 
but then it should be because Norway's like half half the Norwegian side are amateur players, so they've got a bit less uh, less time to hone their skills, I guess. So how I know that the U.S. women's team, I think it was Chile. I think they beat them thirteen zero or something like that, something crazy. They certainly hammered Thailand. That's who I don't was. know how they get Thailand. on. It. Thailand. Yeah. Yeah. So how are they? Yeah, they're, they're still, they're they're still in, going. They're still going. They've got France next up, I think, in the quarterfinals. Um, they're slight favourites for the whole thing, but France are probably second favourites. So it's a really tough draw they've got next. Ooh. What, when did these, these games... The host, well. where, is, where is the World Cup this year? It's in France, yeah. So they've got a um, French crowd on their backs, French oh. um, referee favouring and all that sort of stuff going on. Oh, but for America. They're doing it for America. <laughs> yeah how how annoying is that for you like i know because when you watch it i love british tv uh freaking when you watch like british tv they're not like i mean you guys are patriotic don't get don't get me wrong but you guys aren't like on your shows like representing england like with your sayings or whatever but then when you watch like american stuff you're just like america like is that do you ever find that annoying at all it's it's yeah it's 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 a step beyond anything we have it's a step more people are a bit more cynical than that over here i think you you stand out as like oh of course what what's this guy got what's his agenda and you have the whole like um respect the flag almost worship the flag thing that we don't have at all so that's like at the start of NFL games. That's quite an alien experience to go through. Yeah, I bet. Dude. I, <laughs> like from the outside looking in, it's it's weird because that's always fascinated me. You're the only person from a different country I've ever talked to in my life. So this is a this is a good learning experience. Do you guys have any like? Do you have anybody out there that you would consider like rednecks? You know, like that. Well, in the country. Um... You get the kind of, it's more sort of agricultural. So there's like a bit called the West Country out uh, kind of Somerset, Wiltshire Way down the southwest. And uh, there's a lot of jokes around like um, Norfolk on the east side and how, you know, there's a lot of kind of inbreeding stuff over there, which is just um, slander and lies. But uh, that's, the, that's the, common, the common joke people make. <laughs> so uh what you're obviously a big sports guy you know what was like the driving force behind the the sports i don't know i've always loved sports particularly like um i like watching defensive units like doing their job and mopping up pressure and that sort of thing so i've always been slightly offset from the standard fans it's normally like you know the the show real uh wide receivers or the strikers in football or whatever you know so um, it's those guys who grab the headlines but i've always been more of a watch the right back marking someone out of a game watch the corner mark you know stopping anyone get stopping the stopping the wide receiver getting any touches that sort of thing that's what i like to like to follow defensive strategist that makes sense why you would be a jaguars fan <laughs> yeah, quite. And that that's um serendipitous, I think, rather than choice, but yeah. Alrighty guys, I think this is gonna wrap up episode six of the Yee Lifestyle. I wanna thank Patrick Jackson again because you did this on such short notice. Like it's like one AM where you're at and you're just like, Hey man, sure, I'll do it. I appreciate that. Yeah, and I haven't yawned once, so I've done well, yeah. Up for work in five hours, so uh, I'll listen to this tomorrow. <laughs> Hey, this is my guy, though. That's that's a loyal-ass subscriber. I appreciate you so much. But again, guys, make sure, if you haven't already, you can check the links down below. You can go ahead and like me on Facebook, at Dream Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Dream Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Fawn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody at work with me. Them's just straight facts, man. Go ahead, plug away if you have anything that you want to plug for people to follow you on or anything like that. Uh, I'm at Rattius underscore Johansson on Twitter and you can find me on uh, YouTube as Patrick Jackson where you can see naff videos of my bands playing in a pub which uh, may or may not interest you. <laughs> Alrighty guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video and as always you guys have a great rest of your day. <laughs>